Welcome back to First in Preparedness, and tonight I'm not going to be doing any tips and tricks or showing you how to uh, or anything like that. I'm going to be discussing a concept that frankly scares the shit out of me now. Now, this concept I actually read about back in the early 2000s, and it has to do with something called Universe 25. For those of you who are not familiar with Universe 25, uh, it is an experiment that was conducted by a gentleman named Dr. John B. Calhoun, who was an ethologist and a behavioral researcher. Don't mind me, I got my bourbon here. Now, Dr. John B. Calhoun was famous for doing a lot of experiments with rats and mice and things of that nature, and I believe he started sometime in the 1940s or something like that. And he studied well up into the 80s. So he did a lot of experiments, to say the least. But the, the one that comes to mind that is probably the most terrifying, especially if you're a prepper, you know, or, you know, you're into preparedness or whatever ethos you want to take on there. But why this concept scares me, or, or this particular Universe 25 is an interesting concept because how things are going in the world draw a lot of parallels to this particular universe 25. Now what this universe 25 to give you a quick outline of what it is basically John Calhoun built this virtual garden of Eden for mice. In other words he built this particular structure that would house I think it was 3,800 mice that this thing could hold. All of the food was provided for the mice. All of the water was provided for the mice. Nesting materials, individual apartments, disease-free and predator-free. So theoretically, these mice had absolutely nothing to worry about other than reproduce. So to start the experiment off, I think John, I think he put in eight mating pairs or something like that into this perfect environment and things were supposed to go as expected and they somewhat did to some degree up until a certain amount of time when things went sideways so john or john b calhoun's experiment was mainly to look at if you live in an overpopulated area or high population density or overcrowding or something like that that was his big concern and that's really what he wanted to observe but things did not necessarily go as planned in Universe 25. He started off, he put the mating pairs in. Over time, they did what they were supposed to, start reproducing. If I'm not mistaken, the population doubled every 55 days. So everything was going well up until day 315. Uh, at that point, something strange happened, and we'll look at this graph here. So as you can see, the population started with four pair of mice. Sorry, that's a correction. They started off with eight mice. And after a certain amount of days, well, over time, those mice started to reproduce at the start, and you see a very quick rise in the population, phase B. This phase A, from my understanding, was just the mice adjusting. But at day 315, we see the graph start to lose some of its momentum. And from days 315 to 500, when the population peaked at, if I'm not mistaken, 2200 mice, it then went into a gradual decline as there were no new population uh, coming into that universe. So at day 315, at some point, John Calhoun started seeing some pathological behaviors being exhibited, you know, from days 315. In other words, there were kind of different groups that he would classify these mice as going into or starting to exhibit these behaviors. So there were the dominant males. They had their harems. They were reproducing. Things were going as planned. But then he started to see these female groups start to form and form their own groups, and these were very combative females. They would not allow any sort of sexual advances from males or anything like that, and they would kind of group together, and I don't know if they were trying to protect one another or what, but they basically split off and became a lone female group. 
Another group that were males that didn't have harems, they got into another group. Now, these groups were typically very violent. Um, and he named this group somewhat of the pansexual group. Why have I heard that before recently? So this pansexual group of males was very, very aggressive. They would try to basically fuck anything, whether it was an infant, another male, a female, anything. So there was this hypersexual group of males that basically tried to have sex with anything. I've never seen that before again. Um, then there was another group called the Beautiful Ones. Now, the Beautiful Ones, they were an odd group because they kind of split off. It was both males and females. It wasn't anything specific. But basically, they had no interest in reproduction. They kind of isolated themselves and basically spent all their time preening and cleaning and primping themselves. That's why he called them the Beautiful Ones. They didn't exhibit any aggressive behavior. They just kind of split off and did their own thing. So these pathological behaviors started to exhibit, and inevitably what happened was population collapse. There weren't as many dominant males starting to be reproduced, and everything just kind of started to fall apart. Now, the scary thing about this is the population had never reached maximum density. As I stated before, it only reached 2,200 when this enclosure should have been able to house about 3,800 mice and strange behaviors started to be exhibited. So John Calhoun coined this or term behavioral sink. Feel free to look it up on your own, but what basically behavioral sink is, is a collapse of the social system. Um, you know, basically we can see, you know, some of this, happening even in our own country to some degree. Uh, if you don't, let's just take a look around at some of these pictures here and tell me if you don't see female combative groups, beautiful ones, and of course the pansexuals. Tell me if you don't see some of these frightening parallels happening. Now, let's take a look at a quick interview here with John Calhoun. This is early grainy film like you would see in your elementary school, but he talks about how programming changes and how mice are supposed to be like these little computers. But bear in mind, you know, a mice or a rodent probably has more instincts than those of us of a human. And if mice are programmable or deprogramming or going awry, Imagine what the human mind is capable of in terms of deprogramming or disprogramming to some degree. Let's just listen here. After going through this experiment, what goes through your mind? Are you worried about the future of mankind? A pathological situation like this uh, gives us an understanding of what may be going on in the human situation, what might go on and be catastrophic. And what is really catastrophic and where the real fear is, uh, is on a level where the mice and man are extremely similar. That is, the mice have programs. They're like little computers. Uh, and this is basically genetic with a much smaller element of learned behavior. And too high contact rate disorganizes the program so that it gets washed out, so it's, it's disconnected or it doesn't express itself. This is where you get the lack of involvement. On the human level, we do have a much more complex brain. It does get programmed less by genetics, less by heredity than for the mice, much more cultural. But it's just as subject to being disorganized, to having a program disorganized through inappropriate uh, sequences of contacts, too many contacts. And so that uh, we have this danger, and part of the danger is in that we don't have an adequate establishment. Not a, we, we're now seeing, because the quote establishment doesn't provide all appropriate channels, we should destroy the establishment. We need better establishment to allow interrelationships to protect us from too many contacts, but to allow us for those contacts which we do engage in to be more meaningful for our own lives 
and for meaningful to others in a compassionate sense of, of each of us being involved in helping the other to fulfill his role. We'll have many more roles. And this is where the, the notion of compassion uh, comes in, is helping each of us, helping others to fulfill their programs uh, for development. And so, so we're at this peculiar stage where you're, you're highly optimistic, at the same time highly pessimistic, and you wish to throw your weight, intellectual weight, to moving towards the optimistic side, to opening up continuing evolution. So let's look at our own social decline and how things are going and how high population areas tend to exhibit certain political beliefs, you know. Um, but John Calhoun had a theory that there is only supposed to be so many social interactions that us as humans or even mice for that matter are supposed to have. When we start getting exposed to too many social interactions, something goes awry. Um, so my theory is if, you know, you look at heavily populated areas and it's almost like hive mind mentality, not necessarily good, bad, or indifferent, but is there an effect on that? The other thing that John Calhoun talked about was needing some sort of purpose. So let me ask you this, you know, if humans are losing their sense of purpose, is that going to cause our virtual downfall as a human race? That's why, you know, maybe having this preparedness mentality maybe will give you some amount of purpose and prevent this behavioral sink that potentially could befall us humans. Now, I know there's been a lot of talk about, oh, well, we're humans, we're not mice and rats. No, but we are mammals, ladies and gentlemen. That's exactly what we are. And depending on what philosophical outlook you decide to adhere to, well, you know, that kind of doesn't necessarily mean that we still aren't a programmable species, and when something goes wrong with the program, shit breaks down. So with that, I mean, it's, it's kind of frightening the parallels that you see that happened in Universe 25 and how society is today. You tell me. I don't know. Feel free to comment. Throw your own comments out there. But, hey, feel free to do your own research on Universe 25. It's a rather interesting experiment. And see if you draw the same parallels that I do that, you know, you see going on in society today. Looks pretty scary to me. Thank you for tuning in again. And as always, like and subscribe if you enjoy our content. There, I said it this time.